understand that's your job. But is the president being wise when it comes to his job and managing the economy? New details and what you can expect as early as next month from financial expert Melissa Armo coming up. And shock and outrage after this video captures Canadian police officers arresting a nearly 80-year-old great-grandpa. The small gesture that he did to support the Freedom Convoy that many of us do every day. Hey, hey, hey. what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, hey, that's assault. I've got it all on video. And later. What is this man doing, you may ask? Well, let's just say it's one for the record books, or should we say it's among 52 of them, to be exact? We'll explain all of that and more coming up right here on News On. Let's look at the reasons for the inflation. The reason for the inflation is the supply chains were cut off. We're going to get to more of what the president had to say in just a moment. Consumer prices surging more than expected over the past 12 months, indicating a worsening outlook for inflation and cementing the likelihood of substantial interest rate hikes this year. The Consumer Price Index for January, which measures the cost of dozens of everyday consumer goods that you pay for, well, that rose 7.5% compared to just a year ago. This means your food prices, gas prices, even the roof over your head costs more way more. Joining us live now is CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Melissa, before I get your opinion of what you believe is causing inflation to soar, I want to show you the reasons the president is giving right now. Take a look. Let's look at the reason for the inflation. The reason for the inflation is the supply chains were cut off, meaning that the products, for example, automobiles, the lack of computer chips to be able to build those automobiles so they could function, they need those computer chips. They were not available. So what happens? With the number of cars that were reduced, the new cars reduced, it made up at one point one third the cost of inflation because the price of automobiles were up. Melissa, what is your reaction to what the president just told NBC's Lester Holt? Nothing that he says is going to change the fact that everything has virtually gone up. And let's before we talk about food and gas, let's look at what's happened in the housing industry just in the last two years. At some point, there's going to be a bubble. People have overpaid for many homes that they purchased and rents have gone up across the country, too. And remember, that is people's number one monthly charge. That's the most expensive thing. People pay their housing. After that, you have utilities, you have food, you have gas. And the price of gas yeah. has gone up. When they say 7.5% inflation, I know that that isn't even the real number. How do I know? I'm a consumer. I go and I shop yeah. and I buy things. For example, it's Valentine's Day. On Monday, if you want to buy strawberries, organic strawberries, in New York City, they are $9.50 for wow. a thing of strawberries. I used to pay $3.99 a year ago. That's crazy. I mean, you really got to love strawberries to pay almost $10 for those things. Yeah, a, a lot. So on top of inflation, Citibank is now forecasting that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates by 50 basis points by next month. So in layman's terms, what does that mean for the real Americans, you know, the ones that are watching this show, not the elite. What does that mean to them? Well, if you have any type of credit, a credit card or a line of credit or anything that is tied to a variable rate, you're going to see an increase in your monthly payment. Or if you're someone that's looking to get a new loan, like an auto loan or a home, if you want to buy a home, you're going to see higher rates. What does that translate to? For example, on every 100,000, if we go up 1%, which they're actually talking about 1% by July, so a half a bump in March and then another half a bump in July. So 1% within a four-month period, that is a massive jump. When we've had such low interest rates, that would translate to about $60 per 100,000. For example, if you want to be buying a home and say you want to buy a $400,000 home, it would be about $240 more a month come July than compared to now. But it's really going to affect people's credit cards if they have revolving balances. All right, so we're talking about homes. We've talked about strawberries. Another major hit to our wallets right now, energy prices, which have 
been a major driver of inflation for most of the year. The Labor Department reported that gas prices have skyrocketed 40 percent over the past year. Again, I don't need to tell our viewers that. They know. They go to the pump. While natural gas prices surged almost nearly 25 percent in electricity, well, that is up more than 10 percent. Speaking of energy, and I want to draw your attention to the state of New York because that is where you live right now. Energy bills for New Yorkers surged last month. Uh, and in some cases, almost doubled. I have to know, are you one of those New Yorkers? Well, I've got to be honest with you. I live in a one-bedroom apartment. It's a large one-bedroom, but my average electricity bill here is about $300 a month. That's what my parents pay to heat their entire home in Pennsylvania. So in New York City, electricity bills are always outrageous, in my opinion. But as far as what's going up, it hasn't hit me yet, but there's a backlog because I live in a building with a lot of people. So by the time the landlord bills me, it's two months behind. So I'm probably going to see those charges increase for me come March or, or April. But it is a racket in New York because you really don't have any other choices. You are stuck with one, one provider and that's it. And it's whoever the landlord happens to be. And unfortunately, we pay outrageous electricity bills here, particularly in the summer when we're using mostly uh, for the air conditioning. So I think it's going to hit people come the summer months a lot. Uh, in New York City. Real quickly, uh, speaking of New York, uh, New York, as you know, just lifted its indoor mask mandate this week, citing science, but that doesn't change children who are in schools and their parents either. We're in America. Oh, time to look at this. Look at this. Look, what are you doing? What the f are you doing? What are you doing? So what you just saw there was a father from upstate New York being forcibly tossed from a school board meeting this week after he refused to wear a mask. I want to get your reaction to that. And also another story uh, involving school children uh, at a play kind of reminiscent of an 80s song. Can we play that song real quickly? Because your friends don't dance and if they don't dance, well, they're no friends of mine. <laughs> okay, it's got a good beat, but uh, this one uh, may hit a sour note with some of our viewers. We're going to get you to weigh in on that when we return. So please uh, stick around. Melissa Armo joining us for our panel next. Also still ahead on this edition of News On, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. What new satellite images may say about Russia's intentions to invade Ukraine.